Hello everyone, I'm Yuri and I work in the Game Balance Department. Today we'll tell you about the planned branch of Swedish vehicles. It may seem strange, but Sweden, despite being a small country, has been very prolific in creating unique and interesting vehicle models. During our research, we realized that there could be a branch of heavy tanks, several branches of light and medium tanks, depending on what is needed, an artillery branch, and two branches of tank destroyers. All vehicles are interesting and unique in a varying degree. Some of them have unique gameplay and an original appearance that may be interesting for many players. For now, we will add the vehicles that are the most interesting for a wide audience. They are the branch of medium and heavy tanks, and the branch of tank destroyers. The TD branch is crowned by a vehicle that is famous among tank fans, the STRV-103B. One of the main features of the Swedish TD branch is that these vehicles can adjust their gun traverse and elevation by using their hulls. You will be able to raise and lower the hull due to the hydropneumatic suspension. The Tier 8 vehicle will be able to aim using both its original elevation angles and its suspension, raising or lowering its hull. The peculiar feature of the Tier 9 and 10 vehicles is that their gun is sealed into the hull, so the gun traverse and elevation are performed only by hull traverse and raising or lowering the nose. The gameplay feature of these vehicles is that they will have two modes, travel mode and firing mode. In its basic mode, the vehicle is able to roll and turn. It can fire, of course, but the dispersion is very high. The basic mode doesn't provide for effective fire. It's designed for taking positions, leaving those positions, and moving around the map. After it takes an advantageous position, the vehicle, thanks to its good concealment, switches into a siege mode and starts delivering fire from its very effective gun at any available targets. When it deploys, it becomes a real threat. It starts firing from long distances, causes a lot of damage, and it's hard to get to it. But it's not mobile. It's worth noting that the vehicle is planned with very good firing characteristics, very high accuracy, good rate of fire, and high gun penetration. The only conditional drawback is low damage per shot. To switch into the siege mode, you need to press a special button. The time of deployment will be adjustable, depending on the vehicle. Some vehicles will deploy in one to two seconds. Some will take a bit longer. After switching from one mode to another, you switch into the siege mode. So you can aim up and down with your mouse with the help of hydropneumatic suspension. It changes the vehicle collision model itself and allows you to aim vertically with the help of the hull. It will be very easy for players to do, because switching will take one to two seconds. It only takes one button, and it's already intuitively clear for the vehicles with limited gun traverse angles that have a hull lock. So, for an experienced TD driver, there won't be many drastic changes, but the first important change is that you will now need to press the X key, because previously it wasn't necessary. You could just roll up and deliver fire without pressing it. And another change, possibly considered a drawback, is that you need time to switch into this mode and back. Players just need to occupy a position, press X, switch into the mode, and deliver fire. The vehicle itself will adjust your aiming. I mean that the suspension will raise or lower the tank's front to follow your aim. That's why players won't need to perform any additional actions. Gun traverse is performed by hull traverse, also following the aim. So in general, the mechanics are identical to that of other TDs, but the vehicle will just aim a little bit more with the help of its hull, and change its collision model by lifting or lowering its hull. For these mechanics, when the vehicle moves in this mode, in the siege mode, the effects of camouflage net and binocular telescope will stay. So we will be able to traverse the vehicle left and right and change gun elevation angles. But binocular telescope and camouflage net will still be active, so this will be another pleasant bonus in addition to excellent concealment. Also, in the siege mode, 
the vehicle will be able to change the slope of the upper glacis plates that will allow players, if they are skilled enough, to use the hull to deflect shells and avoid damage. Or just move away from the position, depending on what's more advantageous and convenient for the player. This is an interesting feature because the vehicle is able to change its position significantly, and this can influence its protection. The vehicle collision model is changeable. It's a plus because a regular player will receive a very interesting vehicle, while a very experienced player will also get a protection tool, since the vehicle can be well placed in certain situations. When standing on a hill, it can level itself while covering its underside completely. It can turn and lower the hull to increase the angle for ricochets. But its sharp angles and triangular armor encourage players to rely on them to save the vehicle's HP. At Tier 10, we have a better protected vehicle. The STRV-103B is equipped with an anti-heat grid that will help players use armor more effectively. In general, the concept of Swedish tank building didn't use copious amounts of resources, but instead went the technological way of using the available resources rationally. The Swedish vehicles had low nominal armor thickness, but significant angles of armor inclination to produce a high number of ricochets.